The Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Goswil Obut Akbabu, has declared that the Section 84, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Act, as amended, does not exist. The section of the Electoral Act mandates appointees of the government who are seeking electoral offices to resign before going into the primaries. But an Abia State Division of the Federal High Court sitting in Uma here had declared the section unconstitutional, invalid, illegal, null and void, and ineffective. Now, the court further uh, ordered the Attorney General of the Federation, um, Abu Bakr Malami, to delete the section without further delay. And Akwabi, who joined the presidential race uh, recently, stated that he was not bothered about the appeal, insisting that he and other appointees of the f president who are running for public offices are covered by the provisions of the Constitution, which surpasses every other law. Well, joining us to discuss this is Deji Awobiyide. He and Ladikbo Johnson both are legal practitioners. Deji, I'm sorry if I murdered your name. Thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Johnson, it's interesting. Um, a lot of people have um, made their own deductions from what they think that that part of the Electoral Act as amended says about public office holders. Many of us have questioned, um, you know, how binding it is and if it really does hold water, especially when we have seen so many, um, you know, ministers who have declared their intentions to run for public offices and yet are still holding on to their offices. Um, so take us through what this section says and if it does in any way hold water. Well, um, good evening. Um, I think that um, where, where we usually are at with um, some of the laws that are promulgated by the National Assembly. Um, as you said in your introduction, people like um, Apabio have said that um, it um, runs counter to what the term um, or what the view as um, what the Constitution says about uh, public servants or so um, uh, leaving office before election. Um, and you'll recall that the minister made um, a state, um, in his statement, um, tried to say that there was a difference between um, primary elections and an election. Um, but um, basically, um, it would seem that um, everything is still there until it is tested again in court. Okay. Um, the Federal High Court, as you said, has stated that um, the provision run counter or runs counter to provisions of the um, Constitution. But basically, um, one has to look at it and wonder why we have that in our laws. Um, why would they want um, them to appointees to leave office before contested, whilst um, those who are elected, maybe let's say like the vice president who is also trying to seek office, um, are not affected by it at all. So, um, unfortunately, it's become like a gray thing, gray area. And uh, maybe we'll have more lights being shed on it um, either way. Um, okay. Deji, let, uh, let, me, let me bring Deji in. The contention, as, as um, you know, Mr. Johnson has said, it's a gray area. And he has made an interesting point. Maybe it needs to be tested in court. Uh, but then if a... If a a court has already said that this is dull and void, it should be struck off, even though it's still not struck off. And the fact that the National Assembly had brought this even into our laws. Nigeria always has these many laws, but when it comes to us actually enforcing those laws, uh, sometimes it, it just looks like we enjoy writing down these laws and then also enjoy uh, not adhering to them. But I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Um, do you also think that maybe it needs to be tested in court? Do you think that maybe somebody also has to you know, raise a, a, a suit against these public office holders to be sure that that uh, particular uh, clause or part of the Constitution or the Electoral Act um, 
maybe stays there or being struck off? Well, thank you very much. Uh, let me just start, you know, first and foremost by taking you through the jurisprudence of uh, why that provision was enacted by the National Assembly. And don't forget that um, by virtue of the Constitution, Section 4 precisely, and passed the National Assembly to make laws for the good governance of the nation in its entirety. Mm -hmm. Now, postponed to that power that they have, the National Assembly thought it fit to enact this electoral act and to insert this particular provision. Now, the backdrop is that previously you've had cases where um, the right of ministers or political appointees to contest election you know, have been challenged in court. We have those cases of um, Oni and Fayemi, um, Adamo and Takori, PPA and PDP, where the issue was raised, whether or not a minister is a public servant. Mm. Now, that question was always a recurring theme for, I mean, the past several elections we've had. There's always been an issue that has arisen. When a minister contests an election, the issue is usually raised. And the courts are set to that particular issue. In those cases, that a minister is a political appointee and not a public servant. Mm. Don't forget that the Constitution already provides that public servants must resign their appointments at least 30 days before the election. Now, that's what you'll find in Section 66, 1F, 107, 1F, 137, 1G, 182, 1G. That's what you, that's what you will find in the Constitution, okay, that you need to resign 30 days before the election. However, because these political appointees have always gotten away with it, Okay, so they will remain as ministers, they will go and contest 30 days before, then they, if they emerge victorious, then they will get sworn in. If not, they remain in their political offices. So the National Assembly not decided, don't forget that you have the House of, House of Reps and the Senate. Mm -hmm. They both decided, you know, all those heads, I mean, like them or not, like them or it's them, they had, it, it, the, the bill went through both houses, uh, both the House of Reps and the Senate. And they came to the conclusion that to plug that gap, the lacuna in the Constitution, that usually allowed political appointees to get away with it, to insert this provision of Section 84 to which says political appointees should not participate in congresses or in elections without resigning their offices. Mm. Right? So, so if you understand now that what the National Assembly did was to block that particular loophole that was used by these same politicians previously under the Constitution. Don't forget also that the National Assembly has the power to legitimately make laws for the nation. So, for some second four, they made that particular law. And that law, in my opinion, is valid, is, subsist is subsisting, where even though the court has said um, um, it should be struck out, which is on appeal. Mm -hmm. Okay? And in fact, I was going to the politics of that as well, because the politics of it is also that they found an action against that particular law, did not join the National Assembly to read the case. That court now ordered, if you look at the very, I mean, any Pakistan lawyer knows that that's a very funny relief. The court now ordered the Attorney General to delete that section. Elementary political, political no one, even year one students know that the power to delete provisions or the section, or to alter or to amend is vested in the National Assembly. Exactly. So when the court now says, I order, I hereby order the Attorney General to delete. And after the court was, the judgment was delivered, the Attorney General said he was going to comply with it. I know. I mean, I'm 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 lost for words because to get government to enforce that uh, to comply with judgments in this country is an a very aquilian task. Mm. Whether it's monetary judgment or any judgment, to get them to comply is a very aquilian task. So when you now have the attorney general's office saying they will comply with the judgment, it tells you that uh, something has gone on that. I don't want to know what it is, mm. but it tells me it tells me clearly that that judgment is a contrived judgment, mm. and rightly so. There's an appeal that has been lodged in the National Assembly against that particular judgment. It will not stand because the case law is said to that a minister or a political appointee is not a public servant. Mm. So when you now say that provided provision should be struck out, when that you also go back to the constitution, which says public servant, it now also goes further in 318 to list out the categories of persons that are affected by that provision. It mm -hmm. is clear in black and white. Okay. And every lawyer who is what is solved knows that the provision of the constitution are interpreted liberally. And the way it is there, and literal rule, literal rule will apply to interpret it. It is there in black and white. Let's apply it like that. Okay. So, I mean, I don't agree with any, uh, with Akbabi or whoever that says that that provision is, is illegal. It is not. Let me let me come back to you, Mr. Johnson. I, I want to look, want us to look at the reason why this 
particular part of that electoral act was inserted. Many have complained about certain ministers using the apparatuses or, um, you know, office, public office funds and cars, you know, to as part of their campaign, which is also, according to them, against, you know, the rules. You know, you cannot be using a government property as part of your campaigning. And these are the reasons why many people have questioned um, why that court judgment is saying that this particular part of the Electoral Act be deleted. So if in, in, a, in, let's say, a minister trying to run for office and trying to campaign at the same time, how, how do you separate the office and the man in that, at that point when they're campaigning while they're in office? How do you separate the two? Because this is where the confusion is. Well, um, it's difficult or almost impossible to separate the two. Um, if your minister or um, of, um, of the Federal Republic, and um, you have certain trappings of office, and you're contesting an election, you cannot um, put those things aside and then um, continue to contest. It, it will, it will um, there's no way you can separate it. So they'll do that, they'll have the advantage. Yes, that's why people have complained about it. But as I said earlier, I, um, we look at the advantages of, say, a sitting president as well, uh, who's moving up and down, he, he, or a governor, they wouldn't, they wouldn't leave their offices. Um, well, could that also be that these people were elected, so they have to serve their tenure, but then, yes, at, but, but, but then nothing, nothing stops them from campaigning while they're still sitting I, there? Exactly. They're, they're elected. That's the difference. But I am saying, that yes, they're elected. Um, if they campaign up and down the country, if it's um, they spend um, time campaigning, um, not maybe not doing the work they should be doing, spending time campaigning, it's the same case for the ministers as well. All being that, okay, yes, they were appointed and what have you. So. Um, it's, um, yes, you're right, you cannot separate the person from his position when he's running up and down. But at the same time, um, one wonders why. I know the reasons why they say it, but one really wonders why, um, if it doesn't affect those who are elected governors, deputy governors, and what have you, um, trying to contest, using... Um, uh, or in case of the president or vice president, using the presidential jet to go up and down, then... Um, as much as um, he's a candidate, he's still the president of the country, so he does have rights to use the presidential jet. Exactly. But, exactly. but in the case of a he, minister... He is, hang on. Uh, hang on. You see, he is the president of the country. He has a right. He has to move with security, with everything. That person is a minister. At that point in time, he's doing his work as a minister and exercising his rights to um, go to the people and say, please elect me for this and that position as well. So what I'm saying is, OK, where lies the difference? We know the difference from what you said, but really going back, where, where lies the difference? Why should it be that they should um, um, resign? Isn't it something we brought in from the military era? They thought that, okay, you have step down three months to go, step down um, six months to go if you want to contest, step down and then come and contest. That's just what I am questioning. You understand? We know, we know the position, but why the difference between the two? I know my brother is um, itching to jump in, but why, why the difference between the two? Deji. Um, yes. Well, I, I, I bet to disagree with Mr. Johnson, I mean, for very yeah. obvious reasons. Um, firstly, is that the governor and the deputy, the president and his vice, uh, have the people's mandate to remain in office. They have our mandate to spend our money the best way that they can. And so when they go around with their entourage, I mean, we also need them alive to, do the, to perform their duties. That's why they go around with the security entourage that they have. Now, that's quite different from 
a political office holder, an appointee of the president, who or the governor, who has been appointed at his pleasure, who tomorrow the governor can say, I'm firing him, and uh, same for, like for the president, he can also decide to say, well, I'm relieving you of your post. So why should that person remain in office as minister or as commissioner? who is assigned to do a very um, sensitive, very specific uh, job for the taxpayers and for the people, who remain there, leave that job. For instance, you are, you, are minister, you are minister for works and housing. There are a lot of contracts that need to be executed. There are a lot of things that need to be approved. But you are there on the one hand, now pursue your own personal and selfish agenda. It's a personal agenda. It's not, it's not the government's agenda. If you are campaigning to become governor or to become president, you are pursuing your own personal agenda. So let me give you the instance of the of the of the minister for minister of labor, uh, Dr. Chris Ibigu. Asu is on strike. Nasu is on strike. But yet this this minister, as on this priority list, becoming Nigeria's president, is purchased the, or he wants to purchase the form. I don't know if he has paid the hundred million. I, I, you know, but he, that, that, he's but, yet but to. That, 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 that's his priority now. His priority is not how to resolve the labor crisis under his ministry. His priority now is how to get the APC delegates to approve him and to select or elect him as the APC's flag bearer. Now, how do you balance those, those, those priorities on a scale? The people who suffer for it are the students and the lecturers and the family members who are those students who, are, who, who want their children to back in school. So that's why, that's why I say you cannot put them on the same scale. By saying, well, you should enjoy the same benefit as the governor will enjoy or the president will enjoy. No, he is an appointee of the president. If he so desires that he doesn't want his job anymore and he wants a bigger job, a better job, he should resign his current job and go and pursue his ambition. But to pursue that ambition on the one hand and keep the people, keep the ministry. Under the ministry, you have, you have, you have civil servants, you have the permanent secretary, secretary, you have other directors who are there. You will leave them hanging, depending on you resolve your own personal agenda. I mean, that should not, that, that's not right. And that's why I believe that the House of Reps and, and, and the Senate jointly agreed that Section 8412 should remain. If you okay. observe, when the person was signing the bill into law, when he was assenting to the bill, he didn't mention his observation about that, that particular provision. He went back to the Senate president. The Senate voted on it again that the, that thing should remain. Mm. For obvious reasons. They are politicians. They know why they want that thing to remain. Because okay. they know that what they will do is to put everybody's our, the taxpayers' uh, interest to the back burner and put their own personal agenda in front. And you can see it's playing out. Okay. Every day somebody's buying a million and a half on. You know, I mean, we see there's an inflation going on, there is an economic crisis going on, but people are doing up for a million and a half per day. I mean, there's a problem. So I do not agree, Mr. Johnson, that you say they should enjoy the same privileges. No. Okay. The okay. government has our mandate. But okay. those ministers and those commissioners do not have our mandate. All right, because we're almost out of time. Ms. Johnson, I'll take your last word on this. Again, do we see, if, we, if this flies under the radar for now, and then for, for some reason the minister you know, this becomes a flag bearer of any political party, do we see lawsuits awaiting at the border quickly because we're out of time? Um, definitely, definitely, definitely you'll see lawsuits everywhere. Uh, that's the normal thing. That's Nigeria. It will keep going on that way um, until um, it probably gets to the Supreme Court where we'll have a final decision. Okay. Um, I, um, I... Mr. Johnson, are you still there? Well, apologies, I think we lost uh, our guest, but I want to say thank you. Ladipo Johnson uh, is a legal practitioner. Of course, Deji also is a legal practitioner. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. I think we lost you at some point. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, thank you for having us. All right. Thanks. Well, thank you all for staying with us to round up today's show. We take a look at the highlights of this week's conversations on plus politics don't forget we'll be back on monday at 7 p.m gmt plus one i'm mary anacon have a great weekend You see, the greatest um, robbery of this election, Marianne, is the fact that it has been, because of the misrule of President Mohamed Buhari, it has become an ethnic issue rather than an economic issue, rather than um, an issue of saving our education sector, rather than 
the insecurity in the Northeast and in all parts of the North. Now everybody is more concerned about where the president comes from um, than what the president can do because everybody has seen um, the marginalization, the ethnocentrism that has been at play under the APC. There is a Northern president that will be completing eight years in 2023. And let me restate that the presidency is not of the party. The presidency is the president of the country. So whether it is APC or whether it is PDP or whether it is any other party, is the president of Nigeria, not the president of the party. And for us, and I speak on behalf of Afeni Ferret, Oanez Indigo, Sander, and the Middle Belt Forum, under the auspices of Southern and Middle Belt, uh, Middle Belt leaders. And I'm, I'm restating the position of that world, that any political party in Nigeria, any of the major political parties, there are political parties that we know that are motion parties, any of the major party, political parties, particularly APC and PDP, that have two <laughs> other candidates, lab, will not have our support. And it's okay. a statement of fact. Journalism in Nigeria is an all-commerce affair. Why is it an all-commerce affair? It's only in, in, in journalism where you um, see somebody who read an engineer, engineering course, or maybe a medical course, you know, you know, practicing as a, either a broadcaster or a reporter, you know, doing stories, you know. Um, somebody who probably read psychology in school, you know. So there is the lack of, um, um, what should I say, standardization, you know. So uh, these, all of these things, you know, uh, pose a very serious challenge, you know, in terms of staying on stories and following up on stories. The Southeast governors, led by the governor of the Boy State, has to really sit down again to redefine what they uh, established as the Eastern Security Network. The, I mean, the Ebubago Security Ebubago, Network. Yes. The Ebubago Security Network was meant to be a regional security outfit like Amoteco. But if we watch the way the different other three governors or four governors of the states has uh, have been acting or behaving, it does appear that Ebubago has only been operating in Ebony. And that I won't talk about it because what is even doing in Ebony? It is not going after their non government, it's only going after political opponents. Okay, agreed, yes. Uh, PDP and ABC, who the two major parties, they have a, a, a zoning formula which they have been applying uh, uh, since um, the democratic dispensation came into play. But then, what we see playing out today is like a dysfunction of the entire system. You know, all of a sudden, everybody is saying, oh, we don't believe in zoning. We don't want to follow zoning anymore. You know, so something is, you know, definitely wrong in the structure of these two political parties. And this is where the Igbo leaders need to go to first and resolve issues. Why is it that they are now saying they don't want to do zoning? What is the problem? So you can't tell me that, you know, we can blame Mr. President for everything, but we can't be blaming Mr. President when the political parties themselves are not doing the right thing. I don't know about pushing it to the southeast because obviously those in the south, in the southwest, under the platform of the APC, do not have any obligation to the BGP. So I think it's only a natural thing for them to want to, you know, insist that the president, you know, uh, if, 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 if a president can emerge from the southwest, should emerge from the southwest. But I think what is now happening is that uh, there are even situations that even the city that has zoned the presidency to the southwest is beginning to think twice about it. Uh, you, you know, perhaps they feel that uh, there is a weakness in the south and that the south has not been able to come up with the required consensus needed to put pressure on the north to give up on the issue of the presidency. But they will be making a terrible mistake if they think that after eight years under the president that they can, the North can remain in power for another eight years. That would be chaos, and that's why people are warning.